Welcome back to another episode of Producer Grind Podcast. Sims and Carrington with me. Whoop. What's poppin'? What's good? What's good? <laughs> and we got a special guest in the building here today. This man has worked with Drake on the Nice for What record, In My Feelings. He's the in-house producer for Master P. Please welcome to the show, Black and Mild. I already know. Please believe it. Good, bro. Appreciate you pulling up. Oh, mm-hmm. good. Oh, good. Well, yeah, yeah. How you feeling today, bro? I'm feeling good, man. I'm chilling there with y'all. Yeah. Hey. We yeah, appreciate, you. That's a blessing. appreciate you pulling up. Uh, so, okay. We usually like to ask every one of the producers, you know, on the show, just give us a little background of how you got to this point in your career, you know, just the whole come up process. So if you want to go ahead and give us a little rundown on that. Yeah, man. Um, um, just say that I'm like the like the the next man in fresh KLC out of New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've been holding it down for a minute. Uh, I got my, my real break like in like maybe 2000. Uh, as far as producing bounce music in New Orleans or whatever, um, that's what I'm really, really known for, um, and DJing or whatever. But um, yeah, I've been around for a minute, man. Just you know, constantly staying with the local hits. You know what I'm saying on the radio, and uh, just grinding. Now we've seen that you, uh, you know, you had a major break with the, you know, working with Drake and everything. Um, I'm curious to hear how did that relationship, how did Murder know how or I know there's several producers on the um yeah. on that track on the the tracks with Drake, but how did Murder know to contact you for to add that bounce to that track? Well, really, uh, you know, talk to the front of the mic. Really, uh, shouts out the Murder, but uh, nah, it was uh Drake who um he a fan of New Orleans bounce music, mm-hmm. and uh mm. and so I guess Drake must have hollered at Cortez or whatever, uh, which is who who was um Wayne manager. And uh, he got in contact with a guy from New Orleans that's a uh, a bounce rapper in New Orleans. Um, f- used to be with No Limit back in the days uh, by the name of Phil Wall Weaving. So by me being like, you know, the hottest producer in the city or whatever, and we already done worked together. We already had a record um, that we just did called Let Me Find Out uh, featuring Juvenile and Snoop Dogg that was bubbling. So, you know, we just we just roll together, you know, on, on certain projects. So, you know, we been contacting me, man, and... Uh, you know, we went out there to LA and, you know, hooked up with Drake. No, that, that's, mm. I can definitely hear like a trend, not a trend, but uh, New Orleans bounce music is definitely more prevalent in mainstream media or not media, but in the mainstream now. How do you feel about that? And like, do you feel like this song may played a huge role into introducing everybody to that type of music, that genre? Oh, yeah, definitely, man. Like, you know, we've been, we've been, you know what I'm saying? We live this bounce culture, man. Like, we know that's, that's what we do. Uh, but but to see uh, you know somebody like Drake, you know what I'm saying, messing with it right. and uh, taking it where you know where where is that? Uh, yeah, I feel real good about it. What's the what's the what's the main difference between bounce music and just regular trap music? Uh, the bounce music more is is more up tempo. The tempo totally, you know what I'm saying. That's the difference. Uh, Shit, is they they twerk to anything really these days? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it don't even matter. But uh, yeah, it's it's still a certain form, a form or, or, or the way we make bounce music in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Like certain tempos or something like that. Yeah. What's certain. some of the tempos? Uh, we gonna say maybe ninety six to maybe one hundred and five, hundred and ten. Oh, that is fair. Yeah. So like up in that area. What are some of the famous like bounce songs that we would know? Uh, you mean no juvenile back that thing up? Okay, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Master P. Uh, rock the boat. Um, and a matter of fact, the guy fifth wall weave is on that record, the rock the boat record mm-hmm. with Master P. You know what I'm saying a chopper style. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, they got a few records that was out there. You know that was bounce, whatever. But uh, any Wayne records? Wayne, yeah, Wayne. You got the Wayne and Ti, the ball. You got, uh, you know, Yin Yang Twins was always close to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Kylie Park, you know, he, I think he uh, went to school down there or something. So mm. he spent time, you know, in that area or whatever, New Orleans. So, yeah. What about, what about um, like Young Boy and Gates? They they doing any of that or not? Uh, I think I heard a record with, with well, he's not sh- everybody. You know what I'm saying? Going do, touching it, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, they got so many people, you know, touching it right now. So, now I was watching something. I can't, I'm not sure if like my memory is 100% accurate on it, but there's like a certain sample that goes behind, like a percussion sample that's pretty famous in um, bounce music. You talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, you got to have a trigger man. 
That's what it's called. I'm saying the sure boys, yeah. Okay. I don't even think New York even knew what they had, man. Like, you know you what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy way. because... You know, like, like when you, when you, if you do your homework and listen to the interviews, and like, it was like when they put that record out, New York hated that record. Really? Yeah, they hated the Trigger Man for some reason. Like, shit, us, Atlanta, New, New Orleans, Texas, like, we loved it, the Trigger Man. We used it. You know what I'm saying? We sampled it like crazy mm. or whatever. So, and, and for a long time, them dudes didn't even know. It's you know too cold saying? to be bouncing up there. Yeah, like, <laughs> I guess that's how they feel. But shit. That's a, that's a high record, man. A chill boy's trigger, man. So it's that drum pattern that's what really yeah. is like made a staple in it. Exactly. That makes sense. Is that record, was that sample also used in these tracks with Drake? Uh, some, parts of it? some of it, yeah. Like some of the, some of the sounds or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Just to, just to, you know, have that, that identity of, of, of letting people know that, all right. Yeah, it's a bounce, you know, just a bounce record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about, I know you're in-house producer for No Limit. Talk to us about uh, what's your relationship with Master P and how did you know that come about? Uh, Master P, my homie, man. That's my that's my homie, though. Like, uh, we cool. We built a relationship outside the business. Uh, and I learned a lot from him, man. You know what I'm saying? Just being around him. You know what I'm saying? Just being cool with him, able to be around him and, and his family. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we we business partners, you know what I'm saying, as well as friends or whatever. So what's the best piece of advice you ever got from P? I um Oh man, he always he always talking like on that type of level, like, you know what I'm saying, lecturing and just trying to teach or whatever. But uh yeah, just being around him, period, man. Just even watching how you move. And uh, just just seeing how you work his work ethic, you know what I'm saying that that that's really what you get, like because you constantly see like he rich but he's still hustling, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So it's like, shh. yeah, you gotta you gotta stay working, man. You gotta stay grinding, like period. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Who are some other OGs like uh, of the game that people can look up to and listen to, like especially for us younger cats, like um. They got they got some OGs out there still doing it, man. Uh, I like what Ti just did, the Ti album. That, yeah, that yeah, album's that crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know, like painting a whole different message than what right. trap music is just presenting right now. It's exactly. Just more so, just kind of giving game more so. Just yeah. Have you checked it out? What is it about? Tell me again. Like what's Dime trap. Like mm -hmm. it's more like. It's Tip's 10th album, but it's just more so he's just reflecting on his 10 years. Yeah. And just really just saying, like, tell, like giving advice to, like, the generation after him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? More so. So it was, like, a really good experience to listen to. But it still got that, like, trap feel to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but it's just, like, big. Right. It's right. real big. So. Yeah, you could see, you could tell a group in T.I., man. Like, it's crazy. You say you tell the, the what? The growth. Oh, the growth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The exponential spectacular growth that uh, T.I. has exhibited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, what about what they begin on him for uh, saying big words? Yeah, he be using the SAT words. <laughs> <laughs> really, y'all need to be Googling them because I be Googling them like, what? what? <laughs> like, man, I ain't never yeah, heard that at before. At the end of the day, that yeah. just show you, man, like, you know, no matter where you're from, you could be from the hood or whatever. At the end of the day, you still just got to educate yourself. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah, like. Right. Like you gotta, you gotta know, you gotta know things, man. Get smart. All right. Is any artist like? Cause I know, like listening to the words and the lyrics of a song is very influential. Yeah. Uh, just like in, in your behavior and your motives. Like, are there any yeah. artists that you see that are really dropping real gems for you to pick up if you're looking for them? Um, you know, J Cole do his thing or whatever. You know, he said a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. Uh. I don't know, man. It, it <laughs> was, you know, everybody said there's something that might hit you every now and then or whatever, you know? What do you listen to most? Uh, I, I give everybody a chance, man. You know what I'm saying? But I was just riding to Quavo album, uh, you know, the last couple of days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he had a lot of dope features on there. He had like KK, yeah. like. Madonna, <laughs> like Madonna, Madonna, yeah, I'm Madonna just, on that thing. Uh, Madonna, yeah. what? too much damn music. That's one thing I want. To <laughs> you know, you being you know, in the game for so long, yeah. Obviously, back in the early 2000s, it wasn't as much music, it wasn't as much artists and stuff. Like, how do you 
how do you feel about you know the, the, the it's the I don't want to call it oversaturation. It's the end of, it's the how end do you digest all of like yeah. the music? Man? At the end of the day, it's just, it's, it's, it's just an evolving thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we were just talking about this here, like where everybody in this room right now could be a producer. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like we could be a band, but we also can be our own individual, you know what I'm saying, producer. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Everybody can open up a laptop and just complete and just work on their own beat. You know what I'm saying? And 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 network it. You know what I'm saying? So the online thing is like crazy. Like I be telling people you gotta take advantage of that. You can get rich on your own. You don't need right. nobody else. You know what I'm right. saying? Mm. So you do a lot of collabs with people, like just testing oh, yeah. your style. Oh yeah, yeah. I, mean, I like collabing with other other producers and uh writers and things like that. You have you and uh you and Master Pete like had any conversations about, you know, the current state of music and like the you know, just the oversaturation or whatever? Nah, man, we don't, we we know we have our little talks about certain little things. They don't get that deep though. Nah. Mm-hmm. Nah, we just be working, man. Working, just grinding, you know what I'm saying, keeping it moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just focus on y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we focusing on this. I got the hook up to a uh, soundtrack right now. Oh, that's gonna be you know hard. So, yeah. Now you say like when you collab, like what's something that you take away from collabing with uh, other producers? Like are this, because like I can I, I, I can see how people get nervous to collab with people because it's a whole different pressure. But like when you push yourself to the like some, doing something uncomfortable, you always grow. Like how do you feel about like? I don't know. What do you take away from collabs? Like, do you learn? Like, I just want to get your opinion on it. Take away from it? Yeah, just like, you think it's something that you should really focus on doing just because it opens you up more creatively? Or is it... There's enough, there's enough money it? for everybody out here to eat, man. It's, it's, it's just about just just being uh, creative. You know what I'm saying? And just just being, you know, open-minded. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, and sometimes that kind of challenge yourself. I'm not the type of person to sit there and just feel like I want to just make all the beat by myself or whatever. You know what I'm mm. saying? I would love to get another idea from somebody else to just to, to hear what I did even go further. You right. know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, it's, it's, I like collabing, man. I, I wouldn't take nothing away from it. Mm. You ever dabble outside of hip hop music? Like you ever make like? Oh yeah, man. I make pop, R and B, uh, everything, man. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I got a question. You, uh, you're a producer. You, you still live in New Orleans, right? Yeah. Um, why, why have you chosen to stay in New Orleans? Cause, man, that's where my heart at. That's where my soul at. That's where my family at. You know what I'm saying my mama, my grandma. You know what I'm saying? My my uncles and aunties and you know what I'm saying, they kids, everybody. I got a big old family. Mm. You know, I can, you know, I can, you know, every 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 city got the 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 bad side and the good side. You know what I'm saying? I'm good in my city. I never really had no problems. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that, you know, the problems can't find you or whatever, but you know, I just stay grinding, I stay moving. And um if I was to move, I, I wouldn't move too far from New Orleans. Mm. Like I said, man, it's all about family. You know what I'm saying? So, shit, I, I, you know what it is. You know what I'm What's the current state of like New Orleans? Do you right. feel like it's not really uh, people trying to build each other up? Do you feel like it's still like kind of trying to tear each other down? Or how do you mm-hmm. feel about it? Man, they got the same type of people everywhere, man. It's just who you hook up with, who you get down with, who you surround yourself with. You know right. what I'm saying? You know, we got... We got black millionaire young men in our city, man. You know what I'm saying? That's trying to do stuff, do things or whatever. And, uh, you know, you just got to surround yourself with those type of people, man, and, and, and hook up with those type of people and, and and do things with them. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just dead everywhere like that. You know? How does New Orleans compare to Atlanta, like, as far as, like, the music and, and being able to, you know, Atlanta's a city where if you're a producer, you're up and coming, it's easier to to make connections and stuff like that. How do you how do you compare that to the, like New Orleans? Well, you know, uh, one time at one Atlanta always been popping, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't Atlanta always been on top of me. You know what I'm saying? Ain't ain't no we had it or, or they had it. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, Atlanta always been especially with R and B music. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. a lot of people don't be thinking about that, man. Y'all had fucking TLCs and Usher. <laughs> Ushers and all that. You know what I'm saying? These people been doing numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, the Monica and all that, man, that's that's big. I'm not just, you know, about just hip hop. You know what I'm saying? You got R&B and pop and everything else. So Atlanta always been on top with the music, man. And, uh, 
you know we have our we got our we have our no limit and we have our cash money you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but, two big ass uh, brands yeah 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 so you know they they well respected for what they did or whatever but uh what about like the little indie labels and stuff is there a lot of that going on like Man, New Orleans, ever since Hurricane Katrina, that kind of like really crushed our city, man. Like Even to this day. Even to mm-hmm. this day. Like it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while before we even try to get all that back. And that's what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? With with uh, with my company, Musical Geniuses or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to help bring, put a spark back in the city as far as with the music, on the music side. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get a city hope. So, you know. What about the, about Katrina um, hurt the spirit so much because it's probably not the physical devastation, but like, why did it hurt the spirit of the city so much? Because it because it moved everybody out. The whole city was mm-hmm. evacuated. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And and you know, like shit, that water was was over the whole city, every every part of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you know, and then a lot of people spread out. That was a good thing that that a lot of people spread it out or whatever all all over. But. Uh, but still, just just the, our culture it kind of touched our culture, kind of, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. looking back, like like thirty years from now, looking back, what would you think will be um, like the growth that this city had from facing that time of like devastation? Bouncing think- back, just just surviving and, and, and bouncing back. You know what I'm saying? That we can make it to what you're talking about right now. Then that's an accomplishment right there. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So. Yeah, and we know that you dropped a um a tape afterwards. Like, talk mm-hmm. about that a little bit. Well, you know, like um like I say, I was always known for uh the bounce music or whatever, um mm-hmm. DJing bounce and back. making bounce remixes and all that. Uh, and, um, you know, I had bounced. Uh, I, I dropped a bounce mix tape during the time. I always dropped a bounce mix. Tape. I was living off of that. Like mm-hmm. I ain't really never had no job, so I was uh, I was always doing consignments with the bootleggers and. In the local um, stores in the city or whatever, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was getting me, you know what I'm uh-huh. saying. Yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Like I say, no matter what, you gotta be smart. You just gotta just, you know, learn, man. And, you know, yeah, superstar always say you gotta wiggle. Yeah. You gotta yeah. wiggle. Yeah. And I've been walking around my city like a star. You know what I'm saying. So I ain't tripping, but uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, man, just grinding though. So how does that that um that old um you know seven tapes out the trunk what's the new version of that the new hustle Shit, um soundcloud youtube yeah i know but i mean i'm as far as like <laughs> as far as being able to like put some money in your pocket you mm-hmm. know even if even if it's like just sound a couple YouTube. dollars every day he's, he's, yeah, yeah, but that's, that's like he's, but yeah. you don't get no money from that for a minute like i'm yeah. talking about how could you go out and make well, some money today it, it adds up you just gotta hustle you just you gotta put more out like at the end of the day you was making music you know, back in the days, and you was selling out the trunk, or, or, or either you was just you was just trying to sell sell your CD for five dollars at the gas station, or whatever. However it go, at the end of the day, you just still had to keep. You still gotta just keep recording music and just keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta. It's just with the SoundCloud and YouTube. You just gotta work your page. You gotta work your, your site. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, get you get you some fans and hope they buy you. You know what I'm saying? Buy your music online, but. I feel that way you could reach more people. Like you could reach more people that'll be into you than just giving hand to hand out there on the street. Yeah. Person might never see you no more or whatever. You know what I'm saying? If they want to see you, they can always go, all right, let me go click on this SoundCloud or their YouTube or something. They can even holler at you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Reply, or whatever, leave a post or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I see, man, I, I love that online game. Me like that's shit. P and them and Silk and them always talk about they wish they had that. Back in the day, yes, Lord. It sounds like like <laughs> the two main things is different. It's that the way you distribute, like distributing your music, is yeah. different, and then also you can create more of a personal exactly. connection now. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What's your advice to the people that are still stuck in there trying to sell? They take, you know, there's a lot of people out there still. Yeah, you know what? They got most. They got certain places that still, you know, ain't really make it up there yet. Like they got people that still ride around with CD players and they call. So, you know, they got cities that still like that. You know what I'm saying? So. I guess you just got to do what you got to do in the area you in. You know what I'm saying? And and, and just keep it growing. You, I get, your grind just got to be harder from there. Mm-hmm. 
That's all. If you got a fr- if you had a friend right that was uh, you know trying to be, become a rapper right, and he's like, "Yo, I'm going to South by Southwest next weekend. I, I'm about to print a thousand CDs and hand them out. What would you What would you tell him?" I say, uh, "Go do that, and then when when you come back from that, you got to get back to." Still grinding, you know what I'm saying? SoundCloud, YouTube. <laughs> 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 you know, I, know all of it. I would probably yeah. tell, I would, me, I would be like, bro, don't waste your money. Don't hand out the CDs. I'm just going to be. At the end of the day, it's, 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 a grind, it's a grinding thing, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't tell a person not to do no, nothing that's going to make them feel like they're doing something. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's, it's, that's motivating yourself. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Just keep pushing, keep working. You know what I'm saying? Just keep grinding. Mm-hmm. So like more than it's like maybe it might not be the most effective. Yeah, it thing might not do, be the most yeah, effective just thing, but just even just yeah, just that having the confidence, just yeah, build building work that work ethic. ethic. Don't just don't be lazy. You know right. what I'm saying? Like yeah. get up, get out, move around. But you can also waste a lot of time and money in the True. wrong space. True. That's really what I was kind of trying to get at. Yeah, and trial and error. Yeah, I feel you. But it's just like hey, there's lessons in everything. They got, but they got yeah, people right. that might not have it like that. That's you know what I'm right. saying? And, and they got some people that will have it like that. So. You know, like I say, to each his own, you know what I'm saying? You know, as long as you just trying to do it, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I ain't have all of, all of the beat machines and stuff at first at one time, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to work with what I had to work with, you know, uh, tape players and record players and, and hooking it and stupid ass all wise together, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so, fly starting with floppy, this is the SR-10 and all that, then when I got introduced to Fruity Loops and Reasons and shit like that, and it's a whole nother ball game. What you go to now? I'm on Reasons right now. Reason? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was on Fruity Loops a while ago, well before they started upgrading the computers. Uh-huh. Yeah. The thing that made me jump off of Reasons, I'm gonna say Fruity Loops because the computer wasn't com- wasn't compatible with the the VSTs they was coming out with. I used to live out here in Atlanta, like in 2008, 2009, something like that. There, and uh. Where I had like a little company with my partner Jiro G called Cam G Records or whatever. And uh we were just running around signing a lot of young little artists or whatever. But uh yeah, that was my fruity loop days right there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what made you jump to Reasons, you said? Because Reasons was on a Mac. I became a Mac fan. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I had to worry about all that glitching and all that and all that computer cutting off because of <laughs> the, 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 the 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 VST was you know what I'm saying? But it ain't like that no more though, you know what I'm saying? But re- Fruity Loop was always I used to be fighting people over for man. Fruity Loop was you need to be at, you tripping, man. Yeah. Like I done had a beat battle with a dude because he had the, the beat machine and I had the Fruity <laughs> Loops and we trying to see who drums sound the hardest. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Dude like yo, yo shit all right, though you on Fruity Loop though, yeah. But you need to get on this beat machine. I'm like, man, it's a chore that now. <laughs> you like you got the uh, FL twenty now? Uh, no, I don't, no, I don't even work for it. Right? Yeah, I'm on reasons, reasons, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, and uh, the owners of reasons also contacted me, so I'll be I'll be putting up a blog. They'll be putting up a blog on me. Um, on these sites as well in a oh, minute. So, that's that's what's up. Shout out Propellerhead. Yeah. yeah. You, um, one thing I always hear about people that uh, push Reason is that there's like a, sort, a certain warmth that you can get from that that you yeah. don't get out of FL Studio. Do you, do you agree with that? Uh... I think it's I think it's a Mac thing, man. I think, you know, Fruity Loop just... Fruity Loop was always ahead of its time to me. Uh, but as far as as far as I think Fruity Loop now got the the type of processing power where they can start doing stuff, they they they, they getting up there, like mm. you know what I'm saying. As far as on that end, but Fruity Loop always gonna be the best, man. <laughs> and I went real. I know, you know what I'm saying. I saying? Yeah, did yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, like, hey, man, we, we ain't putting that blog on. No <laughs> hey man, we saw you that know? producing grind interview. Uh, that blog not happening. No more. <laughs> Nah, but but propeller here, that's that's me, man. That's 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 uh that was that was close to the uh the the, the uh MPC and everything for me, like as far as the uh the flow, the workflow. Mm-hmm. I was able to get to everything a little more faster and, mm-hmm. and feel more into it with being able to turn up the, the digital uh boards around and hook stuff in the back and all that up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's why I like reasons like, you know. It's more of, a, more of a physical thing to me, like make you feel like you're really in a studio with right, all those right. machines. So, mm. you know, one thing I think 
um, that why why so many people go with FL Studio is because I feel like what FL Studio has done free. <laughs> True, but they free. also they also by maybe, free VST maybe it being free has helped it um, touch the community oh, yeah. more than Reason because I feel like Reason like there's FL gang like there's there's not a Reason gang it's not as much yeah. of like a cult following as 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 much as um, FL is if you if y'all feel what I'm saying some bro that's just like with Pro Tools you can you can you can recall you can recall sessions in Fruit of Loop Logic Reasons right. whatever. And it, everything do the same thing as Pro Tools, but Pro Tools is just but like, Pro Tools made more people rich, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? More money was spent on yeah, Pro Tools. It's just like it's touched the people more. Yeah, it's so got brand power. That, that's right. what it is with mm-hmm. Fruity Loops. It touched more people. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So you know, it's it's more preferred. Like it's like right next to Pro Tools to me. Like you know what I'm saying? Right. For the producers or whatever. So. We always ask people, you know, when they come to our events, you know, how we always ask them, what, you, what program you use? Eight, nine out of 10 people always say FL Studio. It's definitely, you know, got the most market share. Right. Uh, One thing um, I wanted to touch back on that you had uh, when you were talking about YouTube and SoundCloud, I just got an email from SoundCloud and they're doing like this new, um, I guess, payment plan or something where if you upload your music, they're going to reach out to certain artists and you can collect payments for your streams every single month right. off of it. Who's doing it? Uh, SoundCloud. Oh, really? I guess it's a new strategy they're coming after. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Like you can upload your music and get paid monthly from yeah. SoundCloud for your streams or what, whatever they use to determine how much you make money off. You can't of. you can't knock um, SoundCloud and YouTube, man, because they like like they they always switching up and always trying to help help out the independent people. Right, you know what I'm they saying? touch so the people more again. I want you you can't even hate on that. Like you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> you could you could sit there and spend spend all your time on that man and work that. And 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 gain something from it. Right. You're gonna gain something from it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. And I feel like there's something there's something um, like something so organic about being able to make a beat, then bounce the MP3 and upload it yourself to SoundCloud. What? Choose your picture. Like that whole thing. I feel like it touches a certain community that instead of having to go through DistroKid or TuneCore and uploading it to Spotify, it's just it yeah. feels more like attainable i guess mm-hmm. almost yeah when you when you walk in them offices and you're trying to do these publishing deals and all this and people calling you sometimes you sit back and be like but i could do this shit myself <laughs> <laughs> i got a computer <laughs> yeah right <laughs> right you know like, what i don't saying? need you i don't, I don't need, need you, you. I, could, I could create a account or whatever you know what i'm saying but yeah so like i say man that's that's cool, man. That these these programs and and they got these they, these sites and everything that's trying to help out the independent people. All right. So, what's your day to day lifestyle look like? Work, man. Meal making, music in a studio, creating. Walk us through, just you know, what I mean, as much detail as you can from the moment you wake up. I might wake up at two o'clock because I done been in the studio to seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wake up. No you know what I'm saying? Probably, you know, I might miss, I might don't eat until like 12 o'clock that night. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Like time just be off, just totally different. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm just constantly always working though. Mm. Any, was, any negatives that you, um, have found from that, you know, not standard sleeping pack. You know what I mean? Like the being up all night type man, shit. I don't care about all that, man. As long as them that. checks come in and I ain't tripping. Right. <laughs> you don't ever get concerned about like the long term, you know what I mean? Like oh, 10 man. years, like it might, you know, get slept, like sleep, maybe your sleep cycle's off or something like I deal with that then right now. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I deal. I deal with that. Now I'm good, man. I'm, I'm straight. I'm healthy. I'm straight. So I don't be tripping about that. I, I get enough sleep. You know what I'm saying? And I take my vacations or whatever. I dip off for a week or something, chill out. But um, the most part, you know what I'm saying? Every day, man, just work. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to find a way to to uh, to be better, at, to get better, be better at what I do. You know what I'm saying? Do you ever have to take creative breaks? Like, do you ever get hit a, just a dry patch where you just maybe can't think of nothing? You just need to take some time or you just get away from music? Or do you feel like for the most part? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't going to sit up and act like for every, every day, all, every time, something just pow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bro, ain't nobody like that. You know what I'm saying? To keep it real. You know what I'm saying? But like, even like I had a session last night. Or whatever. I already had a bunch of beats already made. And I just went in the studio with like, with like six writers. I ain't do nothing, man. I'm like, here, man, y'all just will do will just let me sit back and you know what I'm saying, gain Try some ideas off of what y'all doing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. 
when you go to these sessions, do you bring, um, do you ever like when you're showing your music, do all, does all your music have that New Orleans feel to it? And like, do people get turned off by it? Or some people like really accept it? Cause you know, everyone's got their own style when they're playing beats. I was just curious to hear like, it's a very specific sound. I wonder how that happened, like, or how that, um, the other person interprets that or sees it. Well, you know, like, you know, like, you know, a lot of people really just getting on me, man, but, uh, I've been around for a while, bro. I, I don't produce a lot of music for a lot of people. Uh, it ain't just bounce. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah, they, y'all, y'all about to see what's going on, man. You know what I'm saying? I've been, I've been, I've been working with a few people, so y'all, y'all about to you see what's going on, though. But uh, yeah, I'm an all around producer. That's why I call my. That's why I, I musical genius. You know what I'm saying? Like you know. It's I'm not trap. I'm all is. around. Yeah, I'm all around producer, man. Like I get in there, I play live, live instruments on you, or whatever. What you know what I'm saying? Keys. I hit the keys on you, or whatever. Guitar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fancy fingers. <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> smooth. What's your What's your like perfect session look like? Like, is it you by yourself? You in the studio? People would. Like, where are you most creative? Gangsters and choppers and rugas <laughs> and buku weed smoke. I feel you. Big booted bitches, all that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ratchet. There's live music, ratchet, music, ratchet, ratchet, ratchet shit, ghetto. Man. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I done, I'm from New Orleans, man. Like, I done, a lot of my sessions, I done had, man, done the whole project in there. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, supporting. <laughs> Supporting whatever they feel coming hot about their project or out their area, right. and they mm-hmm. in there everybody from the females to the, for, to the whoever. You know what I'm saying? Bring mamas through whatever they ain't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, like I don't I don't freeze up when I work. I don't care who I'm around. Like I I show out and like you has know, it always been like that? It's all yeah. I feel mm-hmm. like I'm on the stage, so mm-hmm. I, I get busy in front of whoever. Mm-hmm. When you first start making beats. Oh man, it goes like, so well, far back. Not like I'm not. I guess I'm not asking like the date, but like, what was your um, kind of your energy when you was first starting making? I'm gonna say this. Yeah. I remember uh, telling telling uh, my my partners or whatever. I remember running the house, playing my beats for them, and and telling them like this is what I wanted to do. And I was like, I was I was like in middle school, man. I probably was like in the sixth grade. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Sixth grade, maybe elementary, fifth grade, but uh, I like I told him what I wanted to do, man, and like I, I stayed at it. You know what I'm saying? Ever since, like I just fell in love with it. Soon when I was able to the, the really like put my music on tape, walk and, around got his own mixtape, yeah, tape. put the paper at the top of the tape. You heard me? Right, put it right. And record all your mm-hmm. mama music and all that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I was I was stuck. I was glued. Mm-hmm. You know. How has really your life changed since this Drake record? Come on now. Besides, 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 you know, monetarily and stuff like that. Yeah. As far as your day to day life, the phone calls that you get, like, tell us mm-hmm. about some of the differences. Yeah, it 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 um it helped open doors as far as um getting me to work with with um a lot of people that I always wanted to work with, and uh, just getting my name into you know into into those into that atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? So, that's, you know, that's that's what I want or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So the Drake effect is real. Yeah, the Drake effect is real. <laughs> but not it's, it's just not the Drake effect, though, man. It's also the people you, like I say, you surround, you got to surround yourself around the right type of people. You need All to right. have the right managers and lawyers and, you know what I'm saying, and, and the people that can work for you. It's you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then it's your, it's your hustle, too. Like, it, it, you got to be able to hustle. You got to be able to get out and move around yourself and, and do things, you know what I'm right. saying? Mm-hmm. So mm. it's like he wouldn't just reach out if he just didn't have nothing going. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, didn't have nothing going on. Man, they got a lot of producers, man. That that produce, you know what I'm saying? And cool produce for people that you, you know what I'm saying? That that stopped just that just stopped there. Yeah. Once like, they got a it. good record and that was it, and you never heard nothing about them or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it, like it's you. You know what right. I'm saying? At the end of the day, everything is with you. It's all on how you feel and how you believe in yourself. If you want to keep going or not. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of them type of people. Like I see, I always been a star in my city. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just on left from here. Mm. How you feel about people um, saying Drake's a culture vulture, or, or uh, have you ever heard anybody talk about that? Yeah, I heard all that. Out yeah, how do you feel about that? 
I ain't, I'm, I ain't no, first of all, I'm gonna let you know right now that I ain't no ass kisser. So mm-hmm. I ain't, I ain't wanna I talk just clear. cause I know yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. gonna talk good about you. I'm gonna keep yeah. it real with you. But, uh, you know, like, you no, know, my, 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 uh, my relationship with Drake is cool, whatever. You know, he kept his word when I did the nice for what? You know, he promised me, you know, another, another chance or whatever to make his album. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And he kept his word. And just from respect. that, I just got a whole lot of respect for right, him right, right there. You know what I'm saying? So I can't really, you know, address some of I can't really talk about something that I don't know. Right. Or whatever, whoever made that remark about it must have, if they dealt with him and, and they got that from the way, I guess that's how he dealt with them. I guess you know it maybe comes more from just, you know, blogs or yeah, just people somebody, just talking. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't care about that shit, man. You got to show me it's real. And, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like show the world if that's that's what if that's what he did or if that's what he did you didn't show it you know all what I'm right. saying. Other than that, man, I don't care about all that stuff, man. You know, I could sit up here and tell y'all was real. Like y'all watch me do the nice for what I'm sitting here telling y'all. I did the nice he, for what. He <laughs> told me he was gonna give me another chance. Now y'all done got the in my feelings, so that's that's the Drake effect for me or whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying so. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, now that's big. Like, yeah, just a man of his word. Yeah, just being a man of his word. Like, that's just big yeah, business right, general. Right. That's like mm-hmm. your character. And the business was fell. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's all good. How you handle it when you run into people who don't have that same mindset? Boy, you better back up. <laughs> <laughs> you about to make me turn to the old master P. I be around P, so you better chill out. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, you mentioned earlier, um, y'all was doing. Uh, I got the hookup too. Can you yeah. tell us more about that? Uh, you know, like they just finished, kind of like finished filming the music. So, uh, I'm gonna say that the the movie they mm-hmm. just finished filming a movie. So, uh, we haven't really been in the studio. We mm-hmm. I was just P wanted to finish up the movie first and get everything straight on that end. So now we about to, we about to start working on a soundtrack or whatever. Uh, we got a lot of major artists sign. Um, we about to work with as far as gonna be on the soundtrack as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just gonna be Master P. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna be like a real soundtrack. Okay. So yeah. this is a sec. It, what, tell me, what's the name again? I got the hookup. I don't see. Yeah, it's I'm a classic. Young, yeah, see, I'm young, so I don't Master even know P what the first used to one put out is. independent movies, man. So like, well, I you know, know, I got the hookup. Man, go watch that. Somebody just educate me. Come on, classic man, classic. It's a so it's all right. Y'all famous black comedians in it, everything. Yeah, so it's like that. He like like if I'm getting it right, like the All Star. You know, y'all heard about the All Star Death Comedy Jam or how they put it on? It's a similar concept. It's it's not nah. it's not the concept, but it can nah, it can create that that effect that 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 situation did because. Like what Pete doing with that movie, he like okay, introducing, okay. he introducing a lot of the new uh, comedians and mm. the social media comedians at that, the people that's, you know, they on social media mm. or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And, and probably the biggest platform that they done touch is the, like the Nick Cannon show, mm. you know what I'm saying? Mm. But just to have those type of people in the movie, like how things was working back in the days, that, you know what I'm saying? That's going to be big for their careers. You know what I'm saying? So he's just like kind of giving them a platform to just elevate yeah, yourself. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Master P was one of the few back in the day to have his own movie. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, damn. He was one of the ones that started the whole like, independent movie thing? Yeah. He, uh, was trying, he was working it like he was doing CDs. Well, <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? So it's like, now, yeah. what, about, what about Rap Snacks too? Is that still a Master P? Is that, was that a Master P thing? Or how did Rap Snacks come about? Rap Snacks, man, that's. Yeah, I think I think well, who was the first on that? Forgot who was the first on that. That was that was Romeo. Yeah, yeah the Romeo. Yeah, Romeo. So they still got Romeo snack. What what they call mm-hmm. they still got Romeo. snack? Barbecue like, with my honey. the rap snacks. <laughs> yeah, they still got that shit in stores everywhere. And them shit hit too. Yeah, <laughs> for, for. that's what's up. Uh, they got the Migo ones too. They got all kinds now though. <laughs> but didn't they start back in like the early two thousands or nineties or something? Yeah, they yeah, they've been started that. He's the one that started it. Yeah. Okay, word. Yeah. Hang and it took and it's like that's a project they must have been working on for a minute because it's just now like hitting more mainstream and like yeah. I'm starting to see it and be like, Oh shoot, that's rap snacks. Boy. Yeah. It's yeah. been like that, but Yeah. Yeah, we had re- we had reached out to them for a little um sponsorship. We ain't never uh, hear back from. Him. We gotta reach out again. See what's up. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, do that. That's slow. Some barbecue flavor. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. the barbecue flavor. Put them right here. Right. <laughs> Believe that. You like blue chips? 
Yeah, yeah, you already know. That's New Orleans down, boy. What kind of shit? The Voodoo, Voodoo chips. chips. I ain't never heard of it. Yeah, I'm Voodoo. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. It's like salt and vinegar with like... Like sweetness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm fucking salt and vinegar. Yeah. It's crazy. It's some homemade shit, or are you buying? Nah, it? nah it's at Kroger. Oh, oh they Kroger. got them here. Gas station like too. You can go to the gas station and get them. That's mm-hmm. the brand Voodoo. I'm gonna try them shit. Mm-hmm. Should be kind of scaring me out though with no food. <laughs> like, kind of together, like, I was like, I, I was, I had a bag the other day, and I was like, you know, I'm not even gonna eat these. I saw the little, the little thing with the pins in them. I was like, yeah, I probably shouldn't be eating. These. <laughs> the flavor's so good though. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, shoot, we got a segment on here called Overrated or Underrated, where we just give you five topics and you just simply tell us if it's overrated or underrated. And All if right. we feel like it, uh, we can talk about it a little bit more, we'll go ahead and do that. Believe that. Let's go. All right, cool. So we got Black and Mild on the Overrated Underrated podcast or Overrated Underrated segment on the Producer Grind podcast. And the first topic is not necessarily overrated or underrated, but plastic tip, plastic tip Black and Milds or wood tip Black and Milds. <laughs> Wood tip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wood tip, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Would you a wine, jazz, casino? Would you? What you mean, wine, jazz, casino? Like, what's what's about the flavor? Yeah. The flavor? I mean, you know you got to do the wine, man. <laughs> the wood yeah, tip, man. wine. Did that wood have anything tip. to do with how you got your name? Nah, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? For real? For real? I was always smoking blacks in the studio. They bro, I think it. I went to school looking like a black and mild one day. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got this thing where we where we call we call ribbon, they be calling it roasting. Oh yeah, yeah. Jonah. So yeah, man, like yeah. I was I was stupid in school. Like I knew somebody was gonna try to tell me something. I was dog skinned, I was skinny, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I I was ready. Like I don't give a fuck if it was a girl or what. Yeah. They just didn't know what they was dealing with. I was in a project practicing. You heard me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm ready to tell it in. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch you on the bus. Yeah. The man said I went to school looking like yeah. a black and mild. Oh so I must have went to school looking like a black and mild and a, and a partner of mine, we still cool a day. And uh yeah, he he called he he called me that shit, man. They had the whole <laughs> the whole school laughing at me about that shit, bro. Damn. Damn. It just stuck. Uh, it just stuck. But once I saw like the the bad the bad chicks in school, you know what I'm saying? That I was like, I'm about to roll with this name. Mm. Uh oh. Yeah, Uh-oh. That, Uh-oh. Said, Black yeah so it kind of big fire. Like I'm like, oh no, this sound kind of powerful right here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Your name Black and Mild? What's that? Who on the <laughs> 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 yeah, let's go. Oh, snap. All right. All right. The next uh next topic on the overrated underrated segment is yeah. Bourbon Street. Is it overrated or underrated? Um I don't know Bourbon Street, man. That's that shit's so ancient. <laughs> <laughs> Bourbon Street just what it is, man. I don't, I don't know. It is it might be overrated to some and it might be underrated. I'm gonna just leave that in the middle. New That's where they do Mardi Gras, there, right? Mardi Gras, uh, nah, Mardi Gras. You know, just the, it's just in the city period. Oh, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mardi Gras. Everywhere. That ain't the main. Where's the main place where they be at? Or just everywhere. They everywhere. You got Mardi Gras in the hood. You got Mardi Gras in the, where the rich folks stay. Mm-hmm. You got the Mardi Gras where they, where they don't do the killing and where they do the killing. You they everywhere. <laughs> everybody party. Man, Mardi Gras is everywhere. But the French quarters. That's uh. That's Bourbon Street. Yeah, that's, that's like downtown. That's like uh, that's like our that shit open twenty four seven. Like that shit just don't close. Like you want to drink, you want to eat, yeah. You just want to walk around. You want to see some titties. You want to see some naked shit, <laughs> some crazy shit. You just go your ass down there to the French quarters. You are gonna get everything you need. <laughs> no, they, I know they got all them old buildings, right? Did that get yeah, ruined? Yeah, they, they, they can be old buildings. It's <laughs> open. Huh? It could be old buildings. It's open. No, I'm saying did, the, did all that area get destroyed by Katrina? They rebuilt it and shit. Oh yeah, that shit always had. That shit was always like that. You know what I'm saying? Water didn't stop that. Or whatever rats still running through there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That place been there. That place been there. It, I think that place done done survived like three hurricanes full of floods. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that that's the money maker, man. They, they ain't tripping about that. They, they gonna fix that place before they fix anything. That, <laughs> that's when people come. Yeah, that's they, they, they like they got so they they building so many condos around it right now. And, and casinos up Canal Street right now, like they trying to turn into some type of Vegas or something. Mm. So, man, they ain't tripping about no floods around there. They're gonna fix all that shit up before they fix anything. Mm. They're gonna bring the money like, in. Yeah, that's, the, that's, like that's the, that's the money right money there. Mm-hmm. That's where all the tourists go. That's like our tourist part, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, well, cool. All right, so staying on the same, the similar topic, uh, Cafe Dumont. Yeah, I already know. Yes, Lord. 
That's a new way to answer it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's the yes, answer. That's the yes, yes, Lord, man. <laughs> what you be getting there? That what you want? To, what y'all want? Some beignets or something? Ooh, That's what hey, you was talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Some beignets. I've been there one time. Whoo, boy. With a powder sugar. You coming out there looking ashy. You got you powder sugar in your jeans. <laughs> no, I'm trying to say it. Yes, don't, Lord. Don't wear nothing black there. Doubles <laughs> for you. All right, the next one, um, <laughs> overrated, underrated, winning a Grammy. Oh, man. Um, man, that's hard. How you going? That's hard. I thought you were going to miss regular stuff. I mean, you know. Winning a Grammy. You think that's overrated or you think it's underrated? Nah, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, ain't, it's, it ain't overrated. But it's not underrated. It's, it's not overrated. And it's not. I, who don't want to win a Grammy? True. True. I want to be known for what I do. True. Shit, let me get a Grammy. Who would you rather have a Grammy and not get paid for a record or get paid a lot of money? Man, for I want the Grammy now? and get paid. There ain't no <laughs> such thing. <laughs> God, so what's more important, the pay or the or the Grammy? The pay, but shit, you still want to be known for what you do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I say get more money. Hey, <laughs> you shit, you you get the Grammy, you better y'all know you got some type of money, yo. <laughs> I guess you doing out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next topic. We really wanted to ask this one because we know you from New Orleans. You from the place where this really comes from, but Papa Do's. Oh man, is that overrated <laughs> or is it underrated? Papa Do's, though. Yeah, if you speaking about that, that's overrated. That's cool. It's all right. What's the good stuff? What should we really know about? What's the, what's the real the real food? Oh man, knowing somebody in New Orleans. <laughs> knowing somebody's grandma. Going by the house, going by the house and let them cook for you. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm just keeping it real. You know, they got a lot of restaurants in the, in the city though, man. They got a lot of new restaurants in the city. Stuff just started evolving and and people started, you know what I'm saying, building their own businesses and stuff. So yeah, they got a lot of those type of places. Oh, cool. That's that for overrated, underrated. Um, I actually had a question I wanted to ask you about, you know, Wayne dropped the Carter five and I'm curious to hear, you know, your thoughts on it and how you felt about him coming back, especially after the situation he went through and then what it's done for the city. When I first listened to, listened to the, I'm going to keep it real, which when I first listened to the album, I was like, man, wait up, let me go back and I got to, I got to go back and listen to Wayne because he ain't dropped nothing in a while. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like, it kind of like took you off of what he what he was building and what he was going to. Like you had to remember, and uh, you know, by all these new waves that came and all this new stuff that came and these new sound, these different sounds. It kind of like made you like, damn, Wayne ain't really what what they what they talk ain't really where they at. You know what I'm saying? So what you mean? What you mean? He just saying like. He, you got to remember Wayne is on a whole nother level, man. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to really sit back and understood, like, and understand, like, Wayne on a whole nother level. The album is crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, damn, all right. Like, speaking, like, you feel like at the position he's at, he can't be rapping or, like, every, what about what everybody else is rapping about? That's yeah, what you're he, saying? Wayne got to be Wayne. He was, he man Wayne. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you can't expect... You can't expect him to do the same thing as everybody. He could get that on the mixtape or whatever. You know what I'm saying? He killed He killed that. What that was the last mixtape he put out? Oh, uh, what is it? Um, the dedica dedication was dedication, six? Man, that shit was mm -hmm. crazy. See, I, I thought that was the Carter 5 because I went and Google, I went to listen to the Carter 5 and I heard the Dedication 6. I was like, whoa. I was like, this is not what I thought. Wayne was just showing you he can do, he can right. as low. He snapped on that. You know what I'm he saying? But as far as the album, he just wanted to... I guess pick up from where he left off at and just, yeah, just trying to build his career. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and that's where I had to I had to get the understanding of what he was doing. So yeah, the album crazy to me. Well, as far as production, how do you feel about the uh, the sound selection? Because I've heard people say you know it may, the drums may sound outdated or the beats may sound outdated, but you also have to keep in mind that it's Wayne. He's not yeah, right, you know yeah. It ain't it ain't really even about that, man. Like if if it sound good, it's good. Yeah, you know I'm saying if you don't like it, you don't like it. It's all on you. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Wayne fan. I feel like Wayne is the greatest rapper of all time to me. You know, and I'm not just saying that because he's from my city. But you, when you got you got to look at the effect that he done he done put on a lot of rappers and a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and he been around for a long time. And he's you know what I'm saying? Like so, you know, you got your Jay Z's and your Pac's or whatever. But I ain't see too many Tupac 
lookalikes running around. I ain't seen too many Jay Z look like running right. around. You, you see know like what I'm saying? The most influence. Yeah, the like the, the the influence of Wayne is like is a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like people gotta give you know give him his give him his props, man, and especially give him his just do while he here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because. Once he gone, then you gonna see everybody trying to, you know what I'm saying? Peace, rest in peace. Yeah, Wayne was, was the greatest and all that. The goat. Nah, oh, man, get that man and shit now while you here. You know what right. I'm saying? So The crazy thing to me is like that album, right? And I think it was the same thing with the, the little album Eminem put out. Yeah. It's like, it was like the talk of the internet, talk of everything for like a week. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, let me see what else is new right here. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like if these albums would have came out like seven, eight years ago, it would be like way longer of a, right. yeah. you know what I mean? A period of like people listening to it. Like, you know, Carter three, like people was like on that shit for months, months and months, a year type <laughs> shit. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But like, I feel but like time changing though. Like that's with all albums now for some reason. That's like the saying. more people don't be on shit too long. Like it's the, the next thing. Carter it just dropped a new single. You see that? Who? Caught it B. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. Like that's crazy. Or she like, dropped. She, she is about to drop it or something, right? No, it just. Oh, she dropped it. Dropped it. already. You know what I'm saying? Like so, that go to show you right then and there, man. People working. You just gotta keep working. The yeah. grind don't stop. Mm-hmm. I guess it kind of also. Stop. It kind of also ties into what we were talking about earlier about it, there's so much music now that we can't like I guess consumers can't really just stay on one thing when nah. you got five new people dropping new right. albums so nah. I guess that plays into it as well like the people's attention spans yeah you gotta keep up man you gotta keep going right you know what I'm saying Drake had a hell of a year boy but it's also that's kind of <laughs> but it's kind of sad too because like you can't you don't really get the true appreciation for right. a piece of music like you right. can't sit on it like. When it's the only thing that came out, people are gonna sit on that for months and yeah. really truly appreciate it. And yeah. now you don't really get that as much. Same thing with Drake too. Like his songs, you know, in and out, in and yeah, out. Yeah, in but and out. But he crazy. did a lot though. Like he worked with different artists or whatever, and the mm-hmm. artists he worked mm-hmm. with was up there with his shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it kind of like kept him on the board right. mm-hmm. all year round. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that that's that that's why I say, man, I don't got no problem with with uh, collabing too. Like you know what I'm saying? Like. Man, everything, everything count. You know right. what I'm saying? All that shit count. I feel like Scorpion is gonna be a classic from ten years, like ten years from now. That's gonna be one of those like oh, that yeah. album. Is as like, far as in his, like as far as in his his um collection, yeah, that's gonna be one of his classic album. Classic albums. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So what else you got coming up? You know, in the next year? Uh, me, <laughs> me, me, and what I'm what I'm doing, what I'm working on right now. Mm. You know, uh, like yes, I well. said, I've been, working, <laughs> yes, I've been well. working with a few people, whatever. I just, you know, I just don't want to speak on a lot of stuff or whatever. Because I'm going to be like, oh, he's speaking on a song, man. We're going to take this shit out. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I ain't trying to get played with like that because I might flash out. You know what I'm saying? But uh, nah, man, just I'm I'm just grinding, man. I'm working. Uh, yeah. What's, got, what's the uh, music? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nah, go ahead. What's the musical genius you was talking about earlier? That's your label. That's, yeah, your, that's your collective. Or yeah, that, that? that's my that's my lingo, man. That's the the thing I always go by. Like if you hear my tag and say Black and Mild, you a genius. You digging me? Mm. Uh, I, I'm also working on my clothing line. I'm about to get ready to launch called Yeg. You a genius? And uh, man, just just keep it rolling, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to I'm trying to get my own beat machine, my own headphones. Like I'm I'm hustling. You know, like I'm, yeah. Hey, you got under, a role in um, the movie? Uh, yeah, they got a little role in. I don't know if they're going to keep it, man. They had me come up in there and do a little something, something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put on his dance. I ain't time. really into the acting thing or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But What about you know, on, the, on the, the business side or the music side? Any? Yeah, the music side, like I said, we're working on the soundtrack or whatever. That's so, dope. you know, I'm the main producer for that. And, uh, hey. Ooh. Ooh. Hell yeah. Well, uh, shout out where everybody can go follow you, check you out and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, man. Black and Mild, uh, Gmail, B-L-A-Q, whatever. Right? Just B-L-A-Q-N-M-I-L-D. Yeah, it's all one word. Uh, yeah, Black and Mild, whatever. Blackandmild.com, Black and Mild, IG, Twitter, Instagram, MySpace, Facebook, and all cl- iCloud, said, said YouTube. MySpace. <laughs> yeah. Throw it back. MySpace. MySpace still popping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah still MySpace pop. still popping. They got people on MySpace. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm going to have to jump on it. <laughs> <laughs> Black and mild so, on LinkedIn, too. Another producer going on MySpace. Hell yeah. Shoot, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> man. Appreciate you pulling up. Oh, yeah, man. Appreciate y'all. Y'all already sure. know. Y'all already sure. know. Anytime y'all want to come through, bam.
It's all good. Y'all got it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, love. Yes, love. Yes, love. Yes, sir. You heard me. You heard me. Another episode in the books, man. Hit that subscribe. Signing out. Peace.